Okay, so the last main unit that we're going to do is about systems of differential equations. Uh, so we're going to go through and get right into it. We're not going to spend uh, like two weeks talking about all these different things before we actually start solving them. So today we'll actually go ahead and look at a system or two of differential equations, talk about some methods for solving them, and we'll go from there. So the first method is called the operator method. And here's the idea. So we're going to have simultaneous ordinary differential equations, which means, again, that we have two or more equations that contain derivatives. So just like linear systems, we have now systems of differential equations. Um, and the idea is that the solutions... are going to be the set of differentiable functions x equals f of t y equals g of t z equals h of t and so on that satisfy each equation on some interval i. <clears throat> okay. So now, first method that we'll talk about is systematic elimination. which sounds exactly what you're used to it meaning. The trick here is that we're going to use differential operators. So this is why we call this the operator method. <clears throat> okay, so for example, so we have x prime plus y prime plus 2y equals 0, x prime minus 3x minus 2y equals 0, okay so the first thing we're going to do is write this in operator form, or differential operator form That's not how you spell using. <clears throat> okay. So x prime would become what? dx plus, and now this would be dy plus 2y, so we'll just factor out a y and write it as d plus 2 times y. That's going to equal 0. Doing something similar with the second equation, this will be d minus 3 times x minus 2y equals 0. So using this convenient uh, notation, makes it a little, easy, a little easier to see what to eliminate and how to approach solving for x or for y. Okay, so in algebra, if you wanted to eliminate x or y, um, you could pick one or the other. I would say maybe I'll double this equation and multiply this one by d plus 2. That would, in turn, eliminate the y's and then we'd have a system or a differential equation in terms of x. So let's see what happens. We'd get <clears throat> oh, 
let's write it out, I suppose. So we get 2dx plus 2 times d plus 2y equals 0. And then here we get d minus 3 times d plus 2x pl uh, minus 2 times d plus 2y equals 0. And if you add these two up, the y terms cancel out. And now you're just left with, let's see, this would be a d squared. The middle term would be a negative d, right? But we're going to add 2d to that, so that's going to give us d squared plus d minus 6 times x and that's going to equal zero. Everybody see how I'm getting that so far? Okay. Now how do I solve for x? Where have we seen this notation before? I combined it already. Yeah, because it's minus, and then I added the 2d in already. Yep. <clears throat> What's that? How? d plus 3, d minus 2, yep. So what does that tell us? Tells us what x is, right? What's x going to be? Okay, so there's x, all right? Now, let me show you the two, you have two options to proceed from here. Okay, one option is to just repeat the elimination get an equation left with y and then solve for y. So let's see what happens when we do that. So if we go back to dx plus d plus 2y equals 0 and d minus 3x minus 2y equals 0. So here we're going to repeat the elimination process will eliminate x this time. And to do so, we'll multiply d minus 3 to the top, d to the bottom, <clears throat> and then maybe what I'll do is subtract here. Okay, so now if I do that, the x's are obviously going to cancel. We're going to get d squared uh, minus d minus 6 and then we're going to subtract a negative 2d so we're going to add 2d and that'll be what we, what we have left in terms of y so then here we get pretty much the same scenario d plus 3 d minus 2 after we combine like terms and factors, so y is going to be c3 e to the minus 3t plus c4 e to the 2t. Okay, so so far we have this for x and this for y. Okay? So, using what we know about the order and the number of constants that we should have, these are just first order derivatives that we're dealing with, yes? This is way too many constants, right? If we have two equations, x and y are both first order derivatives, the, the maximum amount, amount of constants that we should have is just two. Okay, so the third thing we're going to do is to somehow 
eliminate half the constants, half the parameters. Okay, and we can do that because we know what x and y look like, and we know what we should get if I plug it in, um, let's say, into the first equation. So if I plug into plug x and y into equation number one, So I'm going to use dx plus d plus 2y equals 0. Okay. dx means to take the derivative, and I've moved it away, but here it is. Here are two solutions so far. dx, just take the derivative of x. What do we get? Okay, plus, uh, plus, now we do dy, and then we add double y. So dy would be negative 3c3, e to the minus 3t, plus 2c4, e to the 2t. And now we're going to add double y, so that's 2c3, e to the negative 3t plus 2c4 e to the 2t, and that all should equal 0. <clears throat> okay. We have essentially two terms that we're interested in. We have an e to the minus 3t term, so let's group that together. I have minus 3c1, minus 3c3, and plus 2c3. That's our e to the minus 3 term, uh, 3t term. Plus, we'll do the same with the other term, which is e to the 2t. We'll have 2c2 plus 2c4 plus another 2c4 e to the 2t. And that all has to equal zero. So now how does this help us? What's that? We do? All we're trying to do is somehow... Yes, we don't have to get rid of all of them, because we don't have any initial conditions, number one. Number two, if we can somehow express like constant 1 is actually triple constant 3 or something like that, we're fine. Because then we can plug it in and have just one parameter for those two together. Okay? What do we know about this here? Look at what we have on the right. This can't equal 0 which means then that, yeah, these things have to equal zero, right? So let's set them equal to zero and see what happens. We have minus 3c1 minus c3, oh, lucky guess, has to equal zero. So we can now express that uh, constant 3 is triple well, negative 3 times c1. Okay, so we'll utilize this in a second. From the second term, the coefficients there have to equal 0, so we have 2c2 plus 4c4 equals 0. c4, if I move it over and divide by negative 4, is going to be minus 1 half c2. So now what I'm going to do is replace C3 and C4 so that all we have are those two constants from before. So the solution is going to look like this. X equals C1 e to the minus 3t plus C2 e to the 2t. Those are good. Y is going to be, instead of C3, <coughs> so 
So I'm just using the equation from before, but plugging in C3 and C4. C3 is minus 3C1. And C4 was minus 1 half C2. And there's our solution. That was a lot of fun, wasn't it? There's an easier way sometimes. Okay, so I showed you that because this will always work with systems of linear uh, differential equations. However, if we go back to, so we'll quickly go through this, um, our original system here. Okay. We figured out what x was, right? I could plug an x in here, but then that really doesn't help me so much because I have this differential there, so we still have to do all that work. However, the second equation, if I plug in x, I could isolate y pretty, pretty easily here. Does that make sense? So the other method, the other alternative, looks something like this. And this only works occasionally. When it's possible, to isolate x or y after one elimination, So we would say, in the second equation, I could get y alone pretty easily, because I already knew what x was. y would just be, uh, let's see, move it to the right, divide by 2, so it would be half of d minus 3 times x. So then... If I just go ahead and plug in the derivative of x, which is minus 3c1 e to the negative 3t plus 2c2 e to the 2t, and now subtract triple x, so that would be minus 3c1 e to the negative 3t minus 3c2 e to the 2t. We get that y is going to be negative uh, 3c1 e to the minus 3t because you have minus 6 times a half and then you have a negative 1 times a half minus 1 half c2 e to the 2t. So that took a lot less time. But again, that, that's not always an option. If it's there, you should definitely do it. Okay, But that only works if after you eliminate once and you have a solution for either x or y, in one of the equations, it's really easy to isolate the other variable. If you can do it, it's a lot faster, because then you don't have to worry about comparing coefficients and stuff like that. Okay? Let's set up this next one. We're not going to finish today.